Hello, you welcome to this edition of The Inside. I am Bable Jonathan. Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration at Tanganji Paul sends strong warnings against political parties who have decided to boycott the upcoming February 9, 2020 municipal and legislative elections in the Republic of Cameroon. Minister Tanganji Paul sees boycotting an election is hindering development. He sees boycotting an election is anti-constitutional and anti-republican. According to him, it is unacceptable for anyone to decide not to take part in any election and goes further to hinder others from doing so. And for this reason, the minister has said that the Moses of the state will be applied to crush any disorder from whosoever. And he insisted during the last semester meeting of governors in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, that the elections will take place in the 10 regions of Cameroon, in the 58 divisions of the country, and in the 360 subdivisions, indicating that special security dispositions have been deployed to the northwest and southwest regions of the country to ensure a heat free unfolding of elections in those parts of the country hit by socio-political and security crisis for close to three years today meet our guest in this edition of the insight in some few seconds we are receiving one of the most outspoken political leaders in the Republic of Cameroon he is the national president of the popular Action Party. Jang Dennis, you welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Babila, and uh, extend a special new year to all viewers of uh, Equinox. The Minister of Territorial Administration says that you, the PAP, the Popular Action Party, the CPP, the Cameroon People's Party, and of course the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Political Party, you are hindering development by deciding to boycott elections. What do you have to say about this? Well, um, as far as Mr. Tanganji Paul is concerned, um, we have been used to some of his outings. I think um, some of those outings are just there to make uh, himself to be seen by his boss that he's doing something. I wouldn't blame him that much. I just want to recall our memory that um, when the anglophone problem started, he openly said there was no anglophone problem and contradicting his, the prime minister, his boss, by then, young Philemon. Why Young Film was in Bamenda arranging things, and Mr. Tanganji Paul was in Yaoundé saying there was no anglophone problem. I could also recall the, the recent Prime Minister, John Guti, was in Southwest for a peace mission. The same at Tanganji Paul, why the, the Prime Minister was there trying to bring the population together and getting them to understand that the head of state, Mr. Paul Bia, is ready for dialogue. And Mr. Tanganji Paul was at that same moment contradicting his Prime Minister. And uh, of recent, uh, Minister Tanganji Paul again said there was no humanitarian crisis in the uh, Northwest and the South, rather it was uh, the uh, NGOs that were inflaming or uh, manipulating the, the figures or creating chaos in order for them to benefit from the situation. But that same minute, he was still contradicting himself by letting the world know that uh, Mr. Bia has, he has given, uh, has donated more than 100, I mean 100 trucks of uh, loaded aid to go and help the humanitarian, to, to, to rescue the humanitarian crisis in the Northwest and the Southwest. And we begin to ask ourselves, so why all these outings and uh, counteracting himself? And uh, I think, um, Mr. Babila, elections in Cameroon, I, I just want to go back to 2018, the presidential election. In a real democratic country, um, I want to buy the idea that Mr. Bia is, should be he shouldn't even be happy to be a president and should not be proud to let the world know that he was voted by Cameroonians. Cameroon has a population of 25 million, as the estimate, the rough estimate as of 2010. Uh, we don't know the present census, maybe it has gotten to more than 30 as of now. And in a country where there are more than 30 million and you are voted with just about 20, 2 million, less than 2 million, as per the, 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 the results from the Constitutional Council. And do you call yourself a legitimate leader? No, I think there's a problem. 
So Mr. Tanganjipo should be asking himself, uh, was it the political parties that deprive people from being interested in elections? Out of 25 million and you have less than 2 million voting their leader and less than 3 million even participate, taking part in the election and less than 2 million voting the president. There is a problem. That's in 2018 presidential election. Now, uh, the same Mr. Tanganji Paul, because we don't know of any recent uh, 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 statistics of the present, uh, those who are for present uh, statistics of Elecam, I know I have not really taken time, but I know the statistical is still the same. In Northwest and Southwest, the official result as per Elecam, the official statistics, pardon, shows that 800, 800 persons registered in the elections. And that is, and the Northwest, as we know, Northwest and Southwest constitute about 8 million inhabitants, 800 some persons registered in the elections. And Mr. Tenganjipo, can you tell Cameroonians that these twin elections coming up? Let me first of all ask if out of 8 million, just 800 are interested, by then, those who did not, were not well and who are not interested in partaking in elections, was there any anti-campaign? Was there any campaign depriving people from taking part in the election? I think as a Minister of Territorial Admission, he should have those statistics and ask himself why there is that voter apathy. I think Cameroonians are already fed up with the electoral system. Cameroonians, you don't, there is no, um, uh, they don't need any political party or any civil society to campaign boycott. Cameroonians have been boycotting elections in their numbers. Mr. President, no, maybe, maybe you should remind us yeah. why you have decided to, to boycott the elections. Okay, now, based on this uh, present situation, um, PAP boycotted the elections in 2018. The, I mean, we are talking about the presidential elections. Because if we say we are preaching one and indivisible country, and one part or one, about 20% of that population is in a situation where they are not even capable to partake in the day-to-day -day life of that country. There is a call for concern. If we go ahead and say, okay, the 20% doesn't matter, and we should uh, concentrate on the 80%, then automatically, who is that perpetuating the secession? I believe the regime in place is perpetuating the secession. Mr. Babila, we have about we have more than 50,000 to 100 of thousand. Uh, internally, dis pardon, um, as refugees in Nigeria. More than half a million internally displaced. That is the statistics that almost all NGOs, even the government itself, is aware. And as of now that I speak, in the Northwest and the Southwest, even those that they claim are registered, they are highly registered voters. They are the, I mean, I want to talk about the 800 that they claim. When the Anglophone crisis started, most Elecam offices were burned down. Most of those who were even in possession of voting cards were, uh, were, were caught and their voting cards were seized and destroyed. If at all, as per Elecam statistics, shows that 800, and 800 persons are in possession of voting cards or are registered persons in Northwest and Southwest, with the present crisis, I want to bet you that they are not even up to 400. And even if they are up to 400, where are the 400? Most of them are in the other parts of the country, that's the French-speaking zone, and majority are in Nigeria. So I want to let Mr. Tanganji Paul that his, if he insists in going in for this election without the appropriate measures taken, we are talking about the Northwest and Southwest, for all the refugees to come back, for all the internet displaced to come back, on the contrary, I want to believe that he is openly telling the, uh, the international community in the, the national and international community that he has given room that the country should divide. And I want to say something very, very important here again. Not um, the, 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 the political parties, on the contrary, I don't know, me who is glamouring that everything should be put in place for a sincere uh, uh, and, and, and free and fair election to take place. And who is insisting that irrespective of the chaos that looms around the country, Election is your priority. I doubt who is actually perpetuating on the development or hindering the economy of the country. Because if you say you are... He in, thinks that you're the one doing so. We cannot be doing something that hindering, hindering an economy. the development you of cannot the country. Hinder, you cannot be hindering an economy of the country when you are perpetuating war. I think we of the opposition, we said there should be a ceasefire. The... the, 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 the the, 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 the voting process should be free and fair. We are talking especially with the electoral code. The electoral code is not fair, it's not just. 
And we said there should be a fair electoral code where all the act act actors, as far as elections are concerned, should have a fair, a fair, a fair means of uh, uh, carrying out their activities. A level playing ground. I, I, a level playing ground. I want to say something. Almost ninety percent. Not me. I think ninety percent. I can let me. Let me. I'm, 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 I think I am very, very convinced of what I'm saying. Ninety percent of all those going in for this election. I'm talking about those from the northwest and the southwest. Almost. I mean, ninety percent. If I tell all, they are in the French speaking zones presently doing that. I'm talking about the councillors and the parliamentarians vying in for those positions. They are in Yaounde and in Douala. Majority of them are in Yaounde. I know of a whole division. I mean, a whole division where um, the, a division that is made up of uh, municipalities. Almost, almost all their councillors. I know them. They are in Yaounde, and this is where. They are carrying out their own activities. And we are talking here of local elections. And the, the people there, you have to be in the terrain to convince the population that they have to vote, they need to vote you. And they, they were talking about local elections. And I doubt how people in Libya Alem will vote their local representatives in Yaounde. People in Batibo will vote their local representative in Yaounde. People in Wa, people in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, I, I, what, I guess, what do I say? Almost everywhere, Muyuka, uh, um, uh, uh, Kumba, Kwa Kwa, and all the, the like. So the, the, Mr. President, the head of state said security measures have been taken, and if need be, the security measures will be stepped up. And the Minister of Territorial Administration equally indicated that special security dispositions have been taken. More troops have been deployed to those regions to ensure that people be able to vote in Batibo, in, in Gi, in Kwakwa, and so on. Yes, I, I want to let the Minister uh, Tanganji, because most of the time he confused his position as a minister and a CPN campaign manager. The moments where I see more as a campaign manager for CPGM than a minister, because he, Mr. Tanganji needs to understand he's a minister and the country mean that being paid by taxpayers money both from the opposition as well as those in the government so there are moments where can, can, can those security measures guarantee so, so I'm, I'm, I'm still election? coming i'm still coming i think um um what we talk about security measures um i mean there was one time that they said everything is under control on the contrary they were branching on media houses Almost all the ministers, everything is under control. This same Mr. Tanganji Paul, whenever he comes in his outing, everything is under control. And of recent, 700 gendarmes were sent, 350 to Northwest, 350 to Southwest, to add to the hundreds of military already deployed there without counting the forces of law and order already there. So, what? who is fooling who? You are telling the world that everything is under control and you are sending. Uh, 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 um, by battery of military to go in and do really force people from the houses to go and vote. So I want to believe that the government is playing a game. Those guys, the military who have been sent there, the gendarmes, the police, they are the ones to go and fill the ballot box. They are the ones to take the ballot, the papers and go in there and fill it. At the end of the day, they said CPDM has won. Because um, in a free, the world, we, I, mean, I think it is a way, it, it is a message that the international community should really put an eye on Cameroon. I am happy that the same government, there are moments where God has a way of letting the government expose themselves. Because if everything is under control, you will not be sending that battery of military security uh, men to go in there and force uh, Voting vote, to vote is a right. It's, an, it's, it's a right of an individual to f go willingly and freely vote. You don't need security. If everything was okay, you don't need security to accompany you to go and vote and all is, measures. It, it, it so is. Then to tell you that there is a problem, there is a problem. If I was Mr. Bia, if he was sincere of his so-called special status, because I know that is a window dressing that will never be realized, even though that's not what the Northwest and the Southwest, I'm talking about the two English speaking regions, they need. But I want to tell you that if he was sincere and if he was a man that actually has the people at heart, I'm talking about the people in the Northwest and the Southwest, he would have even suspended elections, at least in the two regions. I am not talking about the other eight regions because I am not against election. But we are talking about what type of election. Who are those to represent the people? Who are those to speak on the behalf of the people? I will tell you that as of now, the separatist fighters still dictate the laws in the Northwest and in the Southwest. You can't, you, you have been looking, I mean, if you are a journalist, we have seen videos that have been making so many videos, and 
letting the, the, uh, whosoever that cares to, 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 go, to go there and try to carry out any campaign, you, you stand the wrath of the separatist fighters. And the, and the minister so, said that anybody who is going to attempt to disrupt the elections will face the heavy arm of the state. He said the muscles of the state will be applied the to crush any disorder the coming the from the whosoever. The, the minister would have said, we'll start by telling us how uh, in the former prime minister, if he was that so powerful and the military was that so powerful to influence decisions in the northwest and the southwest. Let us start from 2018. Where did Minister Yang, uh, 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 where did he vote? He voted in, in Bamenda. He, the, because of security in Minister Yang, a prime minister, the prime minister, the boss of Mr. Tanganji, could not go and vote in his own area of uh, Orange, that's Oku. To tell you that those guys, they dictate. Because for security reasons, I think that's from there that the prime minister would have proven to the, the, the Cameroonians that I am the prime minister. And I, I want to talk about, I'm talking about 2018, because as of now the situation is, has deteriorated. In, um, if the, Mr. Tangan Dipo was that serious, I want him as, as to show us an example to go to Lebi Alem and cast his vote, or some ministers to go to Lebi Alem. That's when I, I want to see a battery of CPDM militants showing us how vote is ongoing. I mean, you are of Equinox, they will call you people and say, okay, accompany us to tell you that whosoever wants to disrupt, that is from then on, maybe we will be able Minister to- Mr. Tanganji is from Santa, maybe no, you I, tell I, me no, that. I'm telling you that he should, he should go to, we know they had heat zones. Santa is upstation, maybe because of the military deployment, there things might be. I am saying that for us to be sure, they should go to the heart of Batibo, they should go to the heart of Libya Alem, they should go to the heart of all those ones that we know and go there and cast their votes and, and take the camera people there and said that is it. As of, as, as of now, maybe uh, if there was enough security, as he says, maybe the security is only for the CPDM. Almost all those who are going in for elections in the Northwest, I'm talking about the district, those of the SDF, I mean, for what I'm seeing, except maybe uh, the, the, the SDF and, uh, officials who come and tell us the contrary. Almost all of them have given up the whole list that both the parliamentary and uh, uh, municipal in Bafu, that under SDF, all of them have declined, except maybe they are only playing manipulation. I'm looking, documents the, the, that they must have signed. The chairman, Even the chairman himself. The, the chairman said, said until only, now, the stand oh, of the party is not yet uh, and the chairman, I think, me, 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 the chairman whom I respect, uh, Ni John Frundi, but I was shocked. He told the world that he has become an IDP. He has never a day spent the New Year, the Christmas and New Year out of Bamenda. But he told us everywhere I saw it, on, even from even on, on, on Equinox, that he has become an IDP. He can never put his leg in Bamenda. So if a man of such caliber that we all know, I mean, New John of all in Northwest, in Bamenda, that the Bamenda, the whole him in IST, could not put his leg in Bamenda. I doubt how he is telling us. In the end, John is telling us that elections in the Northwest and Southwest, SDF is over. Because if you, a chairman, can put your leg in a particular zone, how do you expect your militants to go in and carry out uh, campaigns in, 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 the, in the Northwest and in the Southwest? So I want to let the, the world know that nobody is against election. On the contrary, those who are going in for elections, I'm talking about Cameroon in general, those who are going in for elections, they are the ones that represent 00 0.7, like what Atanga Njipo said, because they represent nothing. Those who are going for elections, they represent nothing. Uh, because if you look at it, the statistics, I, I don't want, no, count, no, no political party is carrying out campaign of boycott. I think all what those of us of the opposition, we gave our reasons for the boycott. And Mr. Tanganji has not uh, given the contrary from what we have seen. And yes. some of those who are standing for the boycott we, 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 are encouraging other Cameroonians to boycott. And no, this they is are what encouraging, they, they are not the, encouraging the minister other Cameroonians. Is saying it's not acceptable. Yeah, it is because it's a violation of the it, law. It is because the minister himself is guilty of the fact that those who are going in for the elections, who those who are going in for for the for 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 for, for the voting, are They are not. They are insignificant. So in the, it's a way of like uh, letting the international community feel that everything is okay and throwing the blame on the particular people. Cameroonians and in general are not interested in politics in elections. 
It's, the statistics are there. If you have just 3 million people out of 25 million, no political party carry any ca anti-campaign on, on boycott. On the country, Cameroonians are already aware that. Why is he ranting? I thought, as, a, as they say, they claim that they had 71 votes in 2018. Yeah, they see. control everywhere. And since we thought of us who are boycotting, it, it, is, it is an opportunity for them to sweep everywhere. And since they want to maintain power. So it is a way that means that... He says saying, that the fact that you people are boycotting is, it, is, is it a nuisance is, to the is, electoral it is, it process. Is, it is a way. It is anti-constitutional, anti-republican. Of course, Mr. Tanganji, I think if he knows more about... Um, what's called the pre democratic process in, in, in every electoral system. Boycott is a message, meaning that they have skeletons in the cupboard. They have something they are hiding. Because boycott is a means of letting the world know that things are not moving. You can go ahead. Because we have taken statistics that dictators of Mr. Bia's caliber and of this present regime, they have been, using, they have been deceiving op the opposition in the name of elections. You, uh, they are using elections to keep on maintaining their grip in power. And that is why today they are, they are realizing that many skeletons will be exposed because they are complaining. Why, boy, why would an opposition party boycott an election and become a problem in the regime? There's no problem. I think if they say they have, they constitute everywhere. But since 1982, when the president uh, came to power, till now he has been elected, re-elected, re-elected again and again with an overwhelming majority. So why are you saying that he? If if those boycotting represent just zero zero point, like what Mr. Tanganji Paul said, I don't even see him ranting over the over the media because I don't think zero point zero 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 will influence. <laughs> I think uh, ninety nine point 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 point. He wouldn't have been ranting. On the contrary, those going in for elections are the ones that represent zero point 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 point. And <laughs> as a result of that, he's rather it's a way of like coming, giving an outing that people should go in, campaigning for people to go in and vote. Because if if you claim that you occupy all the terrain and you have you are very influential, even if when people take part in elections, they will not represent anything. It shows that you are everywhere. So go ahead with your satellite parties. And, 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 and carry everywhere. Um, like what, what you just, just said something. The last, the last question you were talking about. Yes, he said that uh, boycotting an election is anti-constitutional. No. Anti-republican. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm saying that he does not even know what we call democracy because he has lived all his life in dictatorship and he has been pruned by a dictator. So he does not even know what is called democracy. Boycotting an election is a democratic process to express your disapproval of the electoral system. That's what we call boycotting. If people are boycotting as a minister of territorial election, he should be asking himself, why is voter apathy? He should not be talking about even boycotting. There is a huge voter apathy in Cameroon because people are fed up with the electoral process. The electoral process is a mess. Elecam is owned by Bia. Koshina is owned by Bia. Minat he himself is already making, he's even telling that he's really, on the contrary, he's rather exposing the, 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 the himself and exposing the institution that he occupied that uh, this ministry is more of a CPDM than a state ministry. You are there for the interest of the CPDM and nobody else. Mr. Tanganji Paul should stop always blaming and expressing the failed, the failed system, a failed regime, because it is too poor where you have, you have failed Cameroonians instead of identifying where your error is, you start looking for where you throw your blame and making the people, it's a manipulation. It's just there to manipulate the, 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 the national, international community, making them to believe that uh, 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 um, uh, the, 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 the frustration that Cameroonians are, are, are experiencing is coming from the, from, from, from the opposition. No, the frustration is coming from the regime. People like them, they have exposed their, their, their system. They have led Cameroonians to believe that, especially him, especially with this, the management of the Anglophone crisis, most of his outings, most of his actions, it has caused a lot of concern. I think there is a high time where Cameroonians are already matured. Cameroonians that's know where, what to that's do. where you, of the, C, the, the PAP, you've added your voice, you've, you're we partnering have, we with are, we the have CPP. Peace. Yes, we to, have said to yes. call for a political yes, transition. Yes, political transition. I think we are in partner with the CPP and other UPC man in them and other like. We have clamor for political transition because the only solution as of now is for Mr. Bia to resign. There is no trust between him and the population. I, especially, I'm talking Cameroonians in general because I don't want to call, talk about the Northwest and the Southwest. There, there is no go zone because even during the 2018 elections, as per the ELECAM result, 
he had just five percent vote from the northwest. Upper Elekam and fifteen from southwest. I think. But the question is, is close. Problem. It will ask you will be uh, how will his resignation solve the problems of Cameroon? Yes, his resignation will solve problem because we have diagnosed this the crisis. We have taken a keen look from. You no, know, we are political. We are political leaders, and we have our ears everywhere. If Mr. Bia resigns today, the anglophone problem becomes history. I, I can tell you authoritatively. authoritatively How will it become history? It will become history because... And Jang you know, Dennis will take over and... No, no, there will be no Jang Dennis. And, and, and solve the problem? I don't think that at that moment we are looking for who to take over. That's what we're talking about, political transition. Who shall sit as one mouth. All those who are in the bushes, whom today... They are claiming that they are dropping their... And, and Mr. Babel, I want to say something, because that's another manipulation. All those who are in the bushes, who are... There are so some people who claim that they have dropped arms. Those guys dropping their arms, maybe the government feels that it is because they are uh, fed up or they are happy with measures taken by the government. No! They are having problems with the diaspora. Meaning that if the diaspora... If you listen to most of their outings, it is that the diaspora have disappointed them. Money that was, that, that was contributed for them to buy arms, the diaspora took everything and they have been kept in hunger. They have kept in poverty. So most of them are living in the bushes, not because they are in complicity with the government. It is because the diaspora must have disappointed them. So it is a sound message because when I listen to most of them, they are attacking me, the diaspora, that you people have failed us. If you would have taken good care of us, we wouldn't have dropped our arms. So dropping the arms does not necessarily mean that they are comfortable with the regime. So in a nutshell, it is to tell you that most of those separatist fighters, if you listen to most of their videos, Anglophones and Francophones don't have any problem. Francophones and Anglophones, they are very comfortable living together. Of course, we have many of them in the French speaking. We see our Francophones in the Northwest and the Southwest living very comfortably. It is a system the Anglophone problem is against a system, a regime. And that regime started from Aijo and became worse under the BIA regime, under BIA system. So I'm telling you that if today Mr. Bia quits, that is, resigns, as I'm telling you, I am very confident that we are going to sit and come. No matter how Mr. Bia pretends to be sincere by granting some... Uh, um, um, cosmetic solutions to this problem, even if he decides today that, okay, I have accepted what people are, or what the demands of my, uh, the separatists and all the like, there will not be any sincere, um, there, will be no, there, will, there, will, there will there will be no confidence again on the life. People have lost confidence. Mr. President, what will you tell Cameroonians who are listening to you now? Well, I will, I will, I will tell Cameroonians that... Um, concerning the elections? Yes, concerning the election, as uh, we, PAP, Popular Action Party, from 2018, we took our stand. No election when we cannot really sit and come out with a concrete solution to resolve the Anglophone problem. No election when the electoral code is still as it is. There can be no concrete, uh, pertinent uh, or credible election when the electoral process, all the electoral, all the institutions that are in charge of uh, uh, handling elections are so attached to an individual, meaning that no matter how the opposition tries, no matter how hard they try, it will be so difficult. So I am telling Cameroonians that um, I don't need to tell them not to go and vote because there will be no election in the Northwest and the Southwest. That one is clear. I'm not the one dictating. The people, there are people there who have already dictated. There will be no elections in the Northwest and Southwest. In the other eight regions, I think uh, the, the, the population they decide, they, they are, they, everything is, the ball is in their court. They know what is good, they know what is bad. I am not there to campaign election boycott. But Cameroonians don't have any interest again in the electoral process. I don't want to give room to feel that Mr. Mr. Tanganji post to start thinking that maybe some politi no political party is depriving people from taking part in election. Cameroonians themselves are not comfortable with this regime and they are not interested in the electoral process. Jam Dennis, you are the national president of the Popular Action Party. Thanks for joining us on the session. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Babila.
thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. We are receiving a senior political uh, scientist, a former minister of the Republic of Cameroon, director of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM Academy, a member of the Central Committee of the ruling CPDM Political Party, Professor Elvis Ngolengola. You welcome to the program. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Babila, for inviting me and uh, let me see this occasion to to uh, wish uh, you and uh, the entire Equinox uh, organization a very uh, happy new year 2020 and that includes also your very prestigious audience thank you all right prof you are a political scientist what you take on the decision to boycott an election Yes, you've uh, clearly said uh, I'm a political scientist and uh, to be very frank with you and uh, I would say this as I, I would say and as I've always said in the classes that I have taught in political science at the International Relations Institute of Cameroon since 1986 at the Catholic University of Central Africa uh, and at the University of Denver, Colorado in the United States. Uh, the issue of boycott in political science is, is, is pejorative, is negative. And uh, it, boycott is not, in terms of democratic development, democratic theory, seen as something positive. Therefore, those who promote or take the position of boycott are not only going contrary to democratic theory, but they are also um, not helping the democratic enterprise in any society. Because history of democracy and history of elections all over the world shows that those who take the position of boycott or those who boycott, boycott or those who position themselves on the side of boycott have always been proven wrong and have always found themselves in, um, in, very, uh, in very weakened positions. In our case, in Cameroon, you know, we are a young democracy. And uh, as a young democracy in Africa, we are all happy, no matter what party we belong to. And after, you know, in Cameroon, there are over 300 political parties. We are all, as members of political parties or as political parties, we are all promoters and agents of a democratic Africa, a democratic society. A democratic society means a society in which people, no matter what political party they choose to belong to, a society in which people in all freedom, in all conscience, exercise their freedom in order to be able to elect those whom they believe can best lead them in order that the society can move forward. The finality of all democracy is to move the society forward. And the, 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 the most tangible element or instrument of democracy, no matter what country you look at, is election. Without elections, there is no democracy. And those who are therefore against elections are against democracy. Therefore, the Minister of Territorial Administration, who is there to represent, is, is talking on behalf of the state. And as you know, elections are organized in all countries. Elections are organized by the state. The state is the organizer and initiator of elections. He is right in that sense. Prof, is it uh, obligatory? for all Cameroonians of voting age to take part in an election? No, st from the standpoint of the law, the law on elections, uh, the, law, the electoral code and the constitution, there is no, no obligation uh, whether to vote or not, depending upon whether or not you are, you, you, you are voting age. But uh, from the standpoint of the law, the constitution, and obviously the criminal code, 
it is wrong, it is criminal, it is against the law for you to incite others or instigate others to boycott or not to vote. So people have to distinguish between the two. In a democracy, and in all democracies, in all democracies, Cameroon, no exception, the constitution and the, 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 the laws governing elections provide you with the freedoms for you to be able to vote. But that same, those same constitutions and the same laws in all democracies, I say, do not oblige you to vote. But those same constitutions and those same laws and other laws consider that you've committed a crime or you've, uh, com you have fallen foul of the law if just because you decide not to go vote, you incite or instigate someone else or disturb someone else or disturb the process of elections from taking place. That is against the law. So uh, those who uh, take the position of boycotting the elections or, uh, or feel like they are justified, from the standpoint of the law, they are free to take that position. But they are not free, because that would be breaking the law, to incite others or to instigate others. That is from the standpoint of the law. As a political scientist and one who has taught political science since the days when I was a PhD uh, student at the University of Denver Graduate School of International Studies in Colorado, the United States of America. I've taught it at the Catholic University of Central Africa in Yaoundé, in Colbison, and I've taught it at the International Relations Institute of Cameroon since 1986. From a political standpoint, democracy by definition means the freedom to express, to organize, to decide. But that freedom to express, to deny, to to decide does not arrogate to you or does not give you the freedom to incite someone to destroy the process because that someone else doesn't belong to you. The process doesn't belong to you. Elections are the most tangible element or instrument of all democracies. And elections have as a finality to build a nation. In the history of democratic elections all over the world, those who have boycotted elections have always found themselves on the wrong side of history and they've always found themselves weaker and weakened than they were before they took the position of election. Therefore, but the law, it is but not in your interest to, to, boycott, to boycott, not to talk of inciting others or instigating others to boycott because that's against the law. And that so, is what the, the Minister of Territorial Administration says is unacceptable. Right. Instigating or hindering others from uh, taking part in an election because you have decided uh, not to do so. Yes. But if the law allows uh, freedom yes. of choice exactly. to decide whether to go in or not, or not you to as vote an individual. Or, yes. or not, how is the decision to boycott then a hindrance to development? Because the Minister said deciding to boycott an election or boycotting an election is hindering development yeah the minister i mean i mean he's talking for in his role as the state representative is a minister who is representing the state as a minister and uh, as you know elections are organized in all democracies by the way in fact even in non-democracies elections are organized by the state they are state run uh, uh, operations and the state which is there to take care of the general interest because the state is there to take care of even those who are in fact against the state. Elections are intended to enable those who are free, meaning the citizen, the individual who has that freedom, to exercise that freedom to elect he or she who will be able to make development decisions, security decisions, decisions in all spheres of public life. And so if you decide to boycott that election, what you've done for yourself is that you have hindered yourself, you have deprived yourself of the opportunity to be able to elect someone who will decide whether or not you'll have a road, 
whether or not you will have uh, an education, whether or not you will have uh, other facilities, development infrastructure, hospitals, and so forth and so on. This is what you've done. Because if you don't decide, because you've decided to boycott, it means that your vote will not count in electing that person who will have the legitimacy and the legality to make decisions that affect you and others in society. And to make it worse, when you go to the extent of breaking the law by inciting or instigating someone else, it means that you want to spread the cancer, your cancer. You want to spread your disease. You want to spread your madness, your folly, your, 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 your mistake, your error to the rest of society. And of course, the state which is there to, see, to take care of the general interest cannot accept that. It is unacceptable. And, and, and I want to add this by saying that beyond the politics and the law or the legality of elections, you know, the democratic enterprise, through the electron elections method, gives the opportunity for citizens, the human citizens that we are, to know ourselves, to celebrate ourselves, to exchange with ourselves. The, human understanding. The, when the, you are against, you are against all of that. The Minister of Territorial Administration thinks or, or says that uh, those who are standing for uh, the decision to boycott elections do not represent 0.0075% of uh, Cameroonians of voting age. Is that true? Well, in terms of numbers, uh, what the Minister of Territorial Administration says, uh, says politically speaking, is, is right in a sense because if you look at, I mean, the point because he quoted numbers, and those are the numbers you're quoting, 00. 00.0075, whatever. From the standpoint of numbers, political numbers, I say, the Minister is right because... Does that mean that... Political, the, no, the, let me the, say the why system. I'm saying to justify why I say he quoted numbers, 0. 0.0075. Why? Because he's using numbers. From the standpoint, of, and these are political numbers or political statistics. If you look at the political statistics and you take the statement the minister has made, we know that in the case of Cameroon, there are over 42 political parties that are going to take part in the elections uh, of uh, 9 February, 20, uh, twin elections of 9 February. And that we know that there are other about... 300 political parties that are registered in Cameroon. Now, the political parties that have decided to boycott, or that we know have decided to boycott, are, are the MRC, which is the, the most vocal, but we also know of uh, the, the, the PAP. I, I, I hasten, and I, and I say this, no, no, I say this in all candor about the CPP. I mean, and I say it as a political scientist, you know, this idea of the CPP in Cameroon is one of the bizarre things that I don't understand because from the standpoint of the law, the law in Cameroon, the CPP, there's only one CPP and that CPP, from the standpoint of law in Cameroon, is, 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 has as chairperson Professor Tita Fon, whom you, you obviously have met and you know. Now, for the last how many years? But that's somebody who was appointed by the Minister of Territorial Administration, and there's another person who was duly elected to that position. No, that we, is Kaban Wala edit. No, as a political scientist, from what I know, reading of the law is that Professor Titafon found it. He's a founder and a chairperson he's, he's one of, of the, the CPP. Fathers. And at some point... Does the law permit a minister to appoint the head of a political no, no, it's party? No, an appointment. When the CPP was appointed, Professor Fon was founded and... He was the chairperson, but in, I think it's the 2011 elections or so, he gave the power to, he allowed uh, Madame Kawala to run on the ticket, just like uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Cabral Libri ran on the ticket of uh, the party that is chaired by uh, Professor Nkumbo. But that does not make... Uh, that and that did not make and I, I, I have to give credit to Mr. Kabar Rubri as a gentleman and, and, and a politician of integrity because he did not use up the powers of uh, Professor Kumvondo. What I'm seeing here in the case of CPP is that the law recognizes the chairperson and founder of CPP as Professor uh, Titafon but for the last few years or so I seem to hear a lot about the CPP headed by someone other than Professor Tita. But the problem is that Professor Tita was appointed by a minister. There is a, a release of the Ministry uh, of Territorial Administration. 
which appoint him as leader of the CPP, whereas a leader of a political party is elected and not appointed. No, but we shouldn't forget. Let's go into the history books because it's good as from a scientific standpoint to go into the history books. You will see that Professor Titafon was the chairperson or the president of the CPP and in, in the election of, I think, 2011 or so, gave the, 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 the I don't want to, I don't know, gave the, gave the power of signature to, to uh, Madame Kawala, as was the case in, in, in when uh, Professor Nkumvondo gave the powers to Mr. Kabara Libri. But Mr. Kabara Libri proved to be a politician of integrity and dignity by not usurping, by not insisting on being the chairperson of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, Professor Kum van der Sparte. No, and that's okay. She said she was elected I think to, to that well, position of leadership can, yes, of the party. Today you can be elected, but in the next time you may, you, 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 you may be thrown out. An election is an election. All an right, election does not come, give, come, you, a come, give to, you a permanent mandate, you know? Uh, even though the, 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 the president of the <laughs> republic and, and the president of the CPDM, your political party, yes. uh, has been there for as long as the CPDM has existed. And, and has, has been elected each time. The a natural candidate? No, no, he's not a natural party. candidate. He has been a statutory, really elected candidate. Each time his mandate has run out. Was re and he was re-elected duly, duly, according to the basic text of the party, according to the constitution of the party. According to the but internal rules and regulations According to the internal the rules, but I don't think this is the case with right. other Com Coming parties. back to the, the, yes. the issue of boycott oh, of elections, right. when the minister highlighted this figure, 0 0.0075, yes. uh, talking about the persons who are standing for the boycott of the upcoming municipal legislative elections, yes. uh, does that mean that even if they are as small as 0 0.0075, their opinion, their decision, does not count, is not important, cannot make any impact? No, you cannot make any impact because numbers speak for themselves. When the numbers are so insignificant, of course, the impact is also insignificant. So what I'm trying to say is that in terms of numbers, when you look at those numbers, and I say political numbers, meaning political statistics, the CPP, uh, as represented by Madame Kawala, does not represent either anything but what the minister said, 0 0.0000. PAP, as represented by, I don't know who is the new uh, Mr. Njang, does not represent anything more than 0.00%. Now, meaning that it is only the MRC which uh, stands out there as someone, but we know in the last election, I mean, he could only muster 14%. Uh, now, the other persons who make noise about boycott, as you know, uh, they are the secessionists uh, or the separatists. But as you know, the secessionists and the separatists are not Democrats and uh, they don't... Uh, you said earlier that the state takes care of everybody. It does. And including that's the good even thing about those the state. who are against the including state. Including even those who are against it. Uh, yeah. and, that's and, why the state protects and, everybody, including even those parties that are boycotting. And, the state protects everybody. And the government has been saying that uh, the separatists are against the state. And if government takes care of everybody, and even the separatists, even those who are against the elections, is it proper for the Minister of Territorial Administration to say that the muscles of the state would be used to crush any disorder from whosoever the muscles of the state would be used? Well, so first of all, I presume as I say, referring to the army. Yeah, the, I mean, what he's saying there is that, as you know, I mean, and it's good for us, in all honesty, and this is a pedagogic exercise to understand exactly what is the role of the state in a given political system and in the face of a given process such as a democratic enterprise such as ours. The role of the state in all political systems is to look after the security, the progress, the living conditions, the humanity, of all the persons of the land or of the territory, the institutions, the cultures. The role of the state is the role of a father, is the role of a Caesar. It is a father to everyone, even if you are a bad child or a good child. And that is why if you notice the head of state, who is the incarnation of the state according to our constitution, as is the case with all heads of states, by the way, all over the world, because heads of states are the incarnation of the state. Be you a queen or a king or a president, you are the incarnation. This is the case in Cameroon. If you notice the head of state 
has always shown his magnanimity towards even those who are against the state. He has shown a lot of magnanimity and olive branch towards those who want to succeed from the state. You've noticed he has given them uh, all the opportunities to come back to the full and has guaranteed them that nothing wrong will happen to them. But and that is why he succeeded but in the major threat, national dialogue. But that's also threatening to crush them, those but who continue on the wrong path. As exactly. But that is why the state... Is the state in charge of states, taking care or crushing state, those who are against the state? The state has as a state duty, or what is referred to in Cameroon, regalian duty, to make sure that it looks after the interests of its citizens, after the security of its territory, after the progress of its citizens, its peoples. And so those who want to defy the state, those who want to, uh, who want to uh, destroy the state, or destroy the components of that state. And the components of the state are what? You know, in political science, the components of any given state are the, the, the territory, the people, and the institutions, uh, government, and the, the institutions related to government. This is what characterizes the components of every state. And anyone, group, or an individual who decides to destroy the state in its entirety or any of its components, the state in all societies, even in democratic societies, and especially in democratic societies, it doesn't matter which one, and there's no exception, the state will go after you to try to stop you from doing so. And in non-democratic societies, if, you're if you, if the state becomes even more more, uh, uh, more heavy-handed in, 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 in less democratic societies. But in democratic societies such as ours, the state, of course, uh, uses the mixture of dialogue, the political arm, in other words, the soft or the carrot, and at the same time, the stick. Because, as you know, under the laws and under the constitutions and in political science theory, the state in all political systems is the only uh, is the only force force that has the ex the, 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 the monopoly of the exclusive use of legitimate and legal power or force he who goes against the state who seeks to destroy the state either in its entirety or any of its components and i've given you the three major components of the of any state that person or that group should know that the state will try to stop you. But legal and minds talk of uh, the, the, the right to self-determination in international law, yes. which uh, permits uh, persons to rise up and say, no, I don't want to belong here anymore. I want to be here. Oh, yeah. Is that considered as uh, something that is dangerous to the state and should be crushed? Yeah, the right to international, uh, the right to, to self-determination is a concept uh, that was uh, uh, popularized after the, after the First World War as well, the Second World War, when uh, uh, the, the time was ripe for the colonial, uh, the colonial uh, system to, to be brought down all over the world. So the right to self-determination um, uh, it, it is not something which is centuries old. It is something which was popularized at that time when the world had reached a point where it was time for the colonial system to be brought down. And so it was for the colonial system to be brought down, that idea was popularized by statesmen at that time. And so it got enshrined into international law, into international relations. But that concept of self-determination is not, is not a it's not, um, it's not uh, synonymous with uh, laissez-faireism or uh, freedom to do anyhow or anything. Or it is not uh, a leeway or a gateway or a key to breaking laws. No. The colonial system in history, if you look at the history of the world, was a system which at a certain point, state world statesmen and peoples considered that it was morally wrong, it was illegal, it was illegitimate, and it was incorrect. 
And it was brought down, the colonial system was brought down as a, a, a world movement. And the concept of self-determination was introduced in order to, to correct and to put things in order. And therefore, uh, when individual political parties now when, when we, we use it... Which still applies today. But it, apply, it is applied today, but in a particular and specific context. In the case of Cameroon, the idea of and the concept of self-determination does not apply because, as you know, the history of Cameroon was duly constituted under, and it's good for all of our audience to know this, the history of Cameroon was duly constituted under the ages of the United Nations organization. First, Cameroon was under the, uh, the, 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 the uh, was a mandated territory uh, after Germany lost uh, the war, Camero uh, the First World War. Uh, Cameroon was under the, uh, as a mandated territory of the League of Nations. And the League of Nations, after some years, failed and was taken over by the United Nations uh, after the Second World War. And, and uh, Cameroon continued to be a trust territory of the United Nations. And all the United administered Nations administered by ages, the British and the French. Administered by, uh, by Britain and France, but under the tutelage of the United Nations. And it is the United Nations that supervised and guaranteed and validated the independence of Cameroon, uh, for Cameroon to be a sovereign independent country. It was done under the tutelage of the United Nations. So Cameroon is one of the successful cases of the success of the United Nations. And that is why those who challenge the sovereignty, the independence, the unity of Cameroon, those who se seek to succeed from the state of Cameroon as a, a united country, fail to understand that from the United Nations standpoint, they have no legal case. From the standpoint of the internal dynamics of Cameroon, they don't have a case. So in terms of international law, secessionists or separatists don't have a case. And those who support them don't quite realize that the United Nations has international lawyers also. The United Nations has political scientists also. Despite the, the, the secession conflict uh, going on now, uh, some call it the secession war going on now in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Yes. Government says elections will take place in all the 10 regions, in all the 58 divisions, in all the 360 subdivisions, including the northwest and southwest regions of the country and special security measures have been taken. More troops have been deployed to those regions. But should an election be militarized? No, you know, elections are not a military exercise, but you know that there is no state. I mean, the, the military or the security, uh, there is no state without a security or defense uh, component. All states have the security. This is one of the attributes of statehood, is to have a component which is called the military or they call it security and defense. And in anything the state does, as long as it has the stamp of the state, whether they are elections or they are any other thing, the state as a matter of, as a matter of uh, integrity and dignity, when the state is involved in anything, it, its involvement uh, uh, is holistic, it's whole. But it is not necessarily that, that, that uh, because the state uh, has a security component, that everything the state does he does it through the military or through the security. No. It is only good for us to understand that all over the world, I say, and Cameroon is no exception, whenever elections are, are taking place, particularly democratic elections, as it is the case in Cameroon, elections which are 
organized by the state. As I said, all elections in, in Cameroon and in all other societies are state operations. And the state in organizing elections understands, as all states do, that elections tend to provoke and generate passions, emotions, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, deviant behavior, uh, controversies, uh, all kinds of struggles, disagreements. And so elections tend to provoke this because elections are, are those who participate in elections are human beings like you and I. And we as political animals, the human beings that we are, sometimes we tend to go overboard, we tend to be excessive, we tend to be so passionate that some get angry, some get zealous and overzealous. The state, which is the organizer, the metadevery of all elections in every society, always knows this very well and always makes sure that dispositions and measures are taken to make sure that the human beings that we are, we who are the participants in the name of of our political parties or voters our organizations that our anger our overzealousness our 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 disagreements do not infringe on the integrity of the state do not infringe on the lives the humanity that we enjoy do not infringe on our human rights do not infringe on the laws governing elections do not infringe on the integrity of the process and of democracy so who the the the, the, the 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 state will always use and the states always use the security component, be they the police, the gendarmerie, the military, the national guard, or the marshals, or the 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 sheriffs, if you're in the United States, the sheriffs, to make sure that the they provide the security to make sure that things go hitch free. But that does not mean that an electoral process, because this component of the state is involved it doesn't make an electoral process a military uh, operation it is not a military operation but you can never have a state without that dimension because that is a natural attribute a constituent constitutional attribute of statehood and you cannot have a state without that component there is no no exception professor Elvis Golengole as a political scientist a former member of government when you look at the state of things today in the two anglophone regions of the country do you think people can freely go and vote on the 9th of february 2020 in uh, the coupe maninguba division yes. in the momo division yes. in places like kwakwa in places like batibun yes and in, all Wong, the rest. in kambe in boyo in gogetunja in, uh, in akwaya we know this and uh, you know we, we, we have to be honest with ourselves and honest with your audience and with the public we are uh, citizens of Cameroon first and we come from uh, the Northwest and Southwest we come from various divisions I for one I come from Kupe Maninguba division and the Tombell subdivision in particular and uh, we have to be frank with ourselves. Uh, the socio-political and the security situation in the Northwest and Southwest in the last three years uh, does not make things, including elections, uh, easy. It's, the people have been subjected to a lot of fear, a lot of intimidation, a lot of violence uh, in the last three years simply because some of our young persons have decided that because they are angry or out of anger or out of, uh, of uh, certain grievances, they will take up arms. What I know, because I'm one of them, uh, the peoples of the Northwest and Southwest are men and women of, with a lot of integrity. They are peace-loving people generally. They are people who believe in the moral side and the principal side of life. And I have gone through the length and breadth of the North and Southwest region from Wum, Kambe, all the way to, to Mundemba. In fact, I'm one of the few persons I can tell you, Mr. Babila, who can put up his hand and say, I spent two nights sleeping in the deep forest of uh, the Korop, Korop Park. 
I don't know of anyone whom you have met who has ever spent two nights sleeping in the deep forest that makes up the Korop National Park. I did, I'm one of those. I slept two nights. I happened to have been there for those two nights with one of the American ambassadors because it was part of my job uh, as Minister of Forestry and Wildlife to have a taste and a feel for what nature, Cameroon's nature is all about. Can you do that today? I may not be able to do that today because, as I said, in the last three years, lots of destruction and violence and intimidation have taken place. And we have tried. And the atmosphere With the measures the government has taken. And again, we should be very thankful to the state of Cameroon under the leadership of our head of state and the measures that he has taken and the government uh, uh, that he has taken uh, to make sure that the peoples of the Northwest and Southwest region continue to have a minimum of peace, a minimum of uh, life, a minimum of happiness and protection. And that is why uh, we should remain, remain grateful to the state because a great majority of the populations of the Northwest and Southwest, in spite of the number of refugees, which is estimated at somewhere around 45 or 50,000, the number of internally displaced persons uh, estimated at somewhere, depending upon what source you take, somewhere between 250,000, some even say 500,000. And that is why I take this opportunity to express, um, uh, to, to thank those secessionist fighters, the young men and women whom I saw during the great uh, major national dialogue, who have decided to come out. And those who have come out since then, and they have decided to drop their arms and come back to the fold. I consider them to be, to be, to be um, those who have come back to the fold and have dropped their arms. They are heroes in many ways because they, want, they have shown that they, are, they want to be Cameroonian, they are proud to be Cameroonian. And I think they give impetus to the refugees and to, to, the, to the internally displaced persons who are already beginning to come back to their homes, to their habitual homes. That gives the government and the head of state more zeal and more uh, inspiration to continue to go up to protect the peoples of the northern and southwest regions. And that is why we are quite happy that Even since the major the, national dialogue, the special status is there, is there to give more more guarantees to the peoples of the northwest and southwest regions. Even though there are lots of questions on the um uh, persons who have been presented this far as ex-combatants, ex-fighters, and also the special status, uh, and lots of lapses indicated here and there, and uh, some thinking that is not going to solve any problem, uh, and so on and so forth. We have to be positive. We have to be positive because, you know, nation building is a positive exercise. Constructing is positive. It's so easy to criticize. You know, what is important is that all of us must know that we're all engineers. Every citizen is an engineer, a social engineer to construct. And when you want to construct, you must put in your mind, you must be a positive thinker because it's like constructing a house or a bridge or a road. If you're not positive, you always only look at what is negative or you always question. In other words, you become a doubting Thomas. The traditional ruler of the Bamenju people traditional. in the uh, West region said he wants to see a Cameroon in 2020 where uh, citizens will not know one need to take arms to make their voices heard. A Cameroon where some will not eat and wipe their hands on the heads of others. Yes. A, a Cameroon where violence will no longer be the only way out of uh, problems. Prof, we have come to... The traditional to, ruler, I agree with him, by the way. I think that we should agree with our traditional rulers because they are men and women who enjoy a certain legitimacy which is beyond the day-to-day -day politician. It's beyond money. Cameroon is there for everyone, no matter what political party or what region you come from. Professor Elvis Golengole, former member of the Cameroon government, director of the CPDM Academy, member of the CPDM Central Committee, and of course, political scientist. Thanks for joining us in this edition of The Insight. Once again, it's a great pleasure to, to have invited me. And uh, as you know, uh, I consider your, your, your program uh, to be a prestigious program. And uh, I'm one of those who is a keen listener to, to uh, Equinox. And uh, I hope that uh, your organization, Equinox, and the management of Equinox, and this team, the entire team that you represent here, will continue to, to, uh, 
to go up the ladder and uh, make themselves uh, the, the media house of reference. Thanks, Prof. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us.